Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 14th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. DNS command control channels and uh, covert channels in general over uh, DNS uh, remain popular because, well, uh, first of all, DNS usually works even through firewalls and such via recursive resolvers and also often does uh, hide sort of in all the DNS traffic, so not always that easy to spot. We have a recent example with the Saitama backdoor, a backdoor that's commonly attributed to the Iranian-backed group APT34. What's sort of special about this particular uh, DNS command control channel is that uh, as typical, we sort of have an artificial looking and uh, fairly kind of obvious host name that's being looked up, but it just looks up an A record. In a lot of uh, covert channels, you have like text records, but here it just looks up an A record. So all you get back is an IPv4 address or multiple IPv4 addresses. And then the backdoor basically decodes these addresses to actual the command that's supposed to be executed. In today's diary, Renato is going over how this encoding scheme works, and he also does have a decoder for you in case you're running into this kind of traffic, you're then able to decode the traffic easily. And users of the free tier of Travis CI, the continuous integration platform, should be aware that logs are not only easily accessible via the API without authentication, but also that these logs may contain credentials, like, for example, access tokens that you're using for sites like GitHub. Overall, this is not really a new problem, and Travis really considers this well the way it's sort of supposed to work but aqua security was able to show well uh, that the attack first of all still does work and that there are some other api functions available that will actually give access to additional logs that some of the earlier work was not able to retrieve so be aware if you're using the free tier of Travis CI that uh, this is happening and uh, well, your solution here is A, switch to a different platform, B, pay for Travis CI, which should fix uh, the issue. And then of course, always keep rotating uh, these credentials. And Avast has an interesting write-up on a new Linux rootkit. Now, Linux rootkits have been around for a long, long time and really um, have also been stayed fairly uh, similar over the years. This particular rootkit that Avast is calling syslog K is actually derived from the Adori NG rootkit, which again is derived from the Adori rootkit. And that's at least as old as I have been doing security. So it uh, has been around for probably decades by now. The interesting thing here is that not only does this uh, syslog k rootkit load a kernel module, which of course makes it more stealthy in some way, but also the way it is triggered is just a magic packet. Now, magic packets are basically just packets that are not really received by a normal uh, server, but instead it uh, just uh, has to show up on the network and the back door is just uh, listening for these packets. In this case, the source port of the packet has to be 59 318 and if a packet like this is seen by the rootkit it will then look for a payload and then respectively execute whatever command or uh, whatever uh, this uh, packet wants it to do AVS does provide a number of indicators of compromise, so you may be able to spot some of this of course that source port could easily be changed to something else and we got some interesting backdoor functionality in the Mitel voice over IP phones. Uh, this was discovered by researchers from Sys, and uh, well, it's 
not quite as bad as often that you just have a simple static uh, telnet password or something like this. In this case, you actually sort of have to first put the phone in a debug mode uh, by uh, restarting the phone while pressing the star and pound key. Only if you do that, then the phone will get a fixed IP address and will be accessible via a specific predetermined root password. So nothing that you have to worry about too much. If a user does have physical access to the phone, then of course this may potentially be a problem because the user may be able to gain root access on the phone and leave a persistent payload. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.